Hello and welcome to Rising Stars. I'm Vikram Oza. Now the travel business is getting busy and uh, very competitive uh, to say the least. Several OTAs promising to uh, deliver the best deals for travel both in India and abroad. Of course, back in 2008, uh, a group of brothers, let's call them the Pity Brothers because that's their surname, they started their enterprise literally from a garage. And then in three months, they lost all their investments uh, thanks to a fraud that took place. But then they started all over again, which is uh, the story of many, many startups. Uh, joining us from our Delhi studio is Prashant Pitti, one of the three co-founders of Ease My Trip. Prashant, welcome to Rising Stars. Great to have you with us. Now, you came into the OTA business at a time that Book My Trip, Clear Trip, Yatra, they were all there. But uh, there was a differentiator, obviously, that you were trying to create at that point in time. What was it? Um, thank you so much, Vikram, to have us on the show. Uh, back in year 2008, when we started our business, uh, we primarily focused on B2B segment, which is serving the needs of the travel agents and uh, booking, uh, making travel itineraries for them. That is how we started the business. However, in year 2011, we opened ourselves up again for a regular consumer. So we started a website called as Ease My Trip in year 2011. From 2008 till 2011, we were primarily focused on travel agents. And that is when we started cons serving consumer side. There was a clear thought process over this, uh, not to go through the, through the B2C route, but uh, making sure that you build your B2B business uh, first. Uh, what was the thought in doing so? Well, we definitely did not want it to be in the price war uh, and providing uh, you know, heavy discounts to consumers as others were doing. So we thought that let's build up the volume via B2B way, uh, where you don't have to provide uh, discounts to the travel agents, but you have to provide them great services. So that's how we decided to start the B2B, and then eventually uh, we started our B2C model. And did the volumes uh, build up uh, as you expected uh, through the B2B route? Uh, what kind of volumes uh, took shape and the kind of revenues that you earned in that three-year window that you had before you decided to go uh, B2C? Well, um, in the first year, we believe we did a business of about 100 crores. We started with a very meager investment, self-investment of about 20 lakhs. First year, we did business of about 100 crores, then about 300. Then the third year, we were touching business of about 600 crores. And that is when we decided uh, that we should uh, basically venture into B2C side as well. But B2C, in the time that you spent uh, waiting to kind of get into it, already uh, there were so many players and uh, even right now the competition is very stiff over there and uh, to the extent that it has to be volume driven, otherwise you can't sustain yourself in this kind of business. So over there itself, your model needed to be uh, slightly different because you were among uh, the later movers and the kind of advantages that come to the first movers were lost to you. So how did you make up for it? <laughs> Well, to be honest, uh, we, we, we waited very patiently. Uh, when we started ourselves in B2C space, uh, you're absolutely right, there were way too many players, and they, were, they all were into price war. Uh, this is what our strategy was. We decided that we will give consumers uh, additional benefit to book through Ease Trip, which is uh, we did not charge them convenience fees like all the others were charging. And we just paid, waited patiently, because uh, at that particular time, B2B was our focus. So over the period of 2011 till 2018, uh, you know, our consumers are the driving force who referred us to their friends, to their relatives that, hey, Ismatip is a place where they could book air tickets without any convenience fees. And that's how uh, this thing got attached to our brand. And in, in the last year, we did business of about 2,000 crores. Uh, we are the only non-funded travel company uh, in top five space, as we are. Uh, plus, uh, we would like to believe that uh, we are amongst the highest taxpayers as we are profitable as well, too. Which is excellent, uh, because as I see it, in eight years, you went uh, from being bootstrapped uh, to a 1,400 crore rupee uh, business in uh, annual turnover. And if you, uh, I'm just wondering, if you had started and perhaps concentrated on being a B2C uh, play at the start, I'm wondering whether this would have happened at all. But... Uh, now that uh, we know that uh, this is the route that you took and very consciously at that, I'm just wondering what are the growth drivers that have taken you to the point uh, that you've arrived at now? Well, a uh, few of the growth uh, factors is one which we already mentioned is basically we never charge con customers convenience fees. So uh, one of the services which we conducted amongst our users, uh, which are about uh, 3 million odd users so far, uh, most of our users do not even check other OTAs or websites uh, before booking their travel plan. They just assume EaseMatrip is the cheapest. Uh, I would say 83% of them uh, do not even visit our competitor's website while booking uh, their uh, travel plans. So that's, that's number one. Number two, uh, 
we have focused very, very heavy on automation uh, compared to the human resources. So the kind of volume which we are doing, about 2,000 crores in, uh, on year, uh, few of our competitors who are also doing the similar volumes, they have a staff strength of about 3,000 plus people, while we are sitting at 280 people. So there are a lot of uh, automations which we have built in our system and we rely very heavily on technology. The third thing which we uh, did in year 2014 onwards, when we started seeing a lot of people who wanted to travel overseas, we basically focused on nine or 10 destinations, which are the most preferred destinations for Indians. And we started opening our own offices. So Ismatrip has its own office in Thailand, uh, basically uh, Russia, Mauritius, Maldives, Dubai, Singapore. At all these places, we have our own offices so that we can provide the best, and hand, uh, best services to the consumers who are using our services and also uh, we can handhold them in the, in the, in the times uh, where they, they definitely need intervention. That is fantastic as far as the plan is concerned. Uh, to kind of keep it small, uh, at least your HR costs are controlled like you pointed out uh, and uh, compared to your competition, you've been able to do that uh, quite successfully. You have 28 offices across the globe and uh, as many as 280 employees. Uh, it does involve a certain amount of cost to set up these offices and when you want to uh, control the services, but it also adds up to your cost. And I'm just wondering, because where margins are concerned, where uh, your entire uh, deals with vendors, whether it's airlines or hotels are concerned, you've had to be able to play the exact same game as your competition. So within that, if these costs of setting up these offices and ensuring a certain level of service goes up, then how do you uh, maintain your margins and revenues? Well, our, um, so for example, last year, we, uh, we filed a profit of about $5 million, which is 30 crores. Uh, the reason why we remain profitable and also uh, are able to invest in these facilities is very simple. As I said earlier, that our HR costs are very low and we do not have to spend money on marketing. For example, the other OTAs, while they're spending between 1,500 to 2,000 rupees in acquiring customers, uh, our users are coming via word of mouth. Uh, there is very little amount of money which we have spent on marketing over the period of years. Have you paid a price for this, uh, really? Because uh, by way of brand recognition sometimes, the first uh, thought that doesn't uh, come in mind is an ease my trip, even at this point in time. So I'm just wondering, the company has grown, the size has grown, uh, your profits speak for themselves. But has this strategy got to change now? Because uh, after you've hit critical mass, perhaps you need to kind of propel yourself that much more and uh, make yourself uh, be that much more noticed. Uh, well, that's right. Uh, basically, now we are coming out. Uh, till this time, we have put our heads down and we have worked uh, tirelessly to serve our cons consumers. Uh, and uh, to be honest, it's not that we have stayed away from uh, raising funds. It's just that we never got time or we, we did not find it to be right time for us uh, to put our energies in raising money. So uh, now probably we are, uh, we are open to raise money and look forward to growing even further. So what are your expansion plans then? Uh, do highlight those for us uh, by way of uh, growth because I think that tickets are uh, turning in about 30% of your revenues. A lot of it is coming through uh, hotels as well. So when you look at your expansion plans with the number of offices that you have or the kind of employees that you're hiring, uh, the kind of funds that you will require, what's the size and uh, what's the plan on fundraising that uh, now you have the time for, hopefully? Well, we are uh, looking to raise anywhere between uh, 30 to $50 million. Uh, and uh, the timeline for that, what we have set up is next one year. And uh, with that, we would primarily be focused on investing more in technology rather than uh, the human resources as what our strengths are. Uh, we would be leveraging technology to continue the growth. And uh, we are expecting to hit the target of 7,500 crores by year 22, uh, to, uh, 2022 and continuing the growth of 30% year on year. It sounds like a fantastic plan. Uh, the numbers are speaking uh, the story for themselves, uh, Prashant, and we wish you great luck on this uh, journey that you've embarked on. Of course, there would be uh, pitfalls galore uh, because uh, we've seen that happen within the OTA space because of the increased competition, because of the price wars. But uh, you've been very clear on uh, making sure that frugality is uh, 
the real mantra for your business, and that has really helped your cause. So thanks very much uh, for joining us, and we'll be checking in uh, with you again in the future. Thanks for joining us on Rising Thank you Stars. so much for having me away. And with that, we'll take a small breather. There'll be many more entrepreneurs on this show, so do keep it with us.